This is not and will not be America's fight alone. Our job is to find enough common ground. Yeah, I'm a kid from Akron, Ohio. Make history. Why does success? I had no knowledge. I'm running for president. <laughs> Thank you and welcome to the HuffPost Show, our not that reverent look at the week's top stories. I'm Roy Seekoff and we're coming to you live from our LA studio. We've got a great show for you tonight. Acting legend Robert Duvall is here with his co star and wife Luciana. We also have actress and author Marielle Hemingway. And a very, very funny man, David Koechner. Yeah. But I want to kick things off with This Week In, This Week In. Our look at some of the fanatics, fools, morons, and miscreants who caught our attention this week. <laughs> First up, This Week In, another important thing no one seems to care about. <laughs> WikiLeaks founder Julian Assange announced an effort to raise $100,000 to entice hackers and whistleblowers to release the details of the Trans-Pacific partnership trade deal, a move that highlights the trouble opponents of the deal have had in getting people to pay attention to the issue. Is this really what it's come to? We have to bribe people to give a shit? <laughs> I mean, remember the good old days when folks like Edward Snowden, Daniel Ellsberg, and the North Koreans would leak documents simply for the love of the game? <laughs> and it's not like pulling the curtain back on TPP isn't a good thing. I mean, it is totally hack-worthy at least based on what we know about it, which admittedly isn't a whole hell of a lot since the negotiation, the Gnoshi, hello, <laughs> hello. Yes, we are live and we're still gonna go because I'm telling you, the negotiations are classified. <laughs> yes. <laughs> but we do know this, it's a free trade agreement. And past free trade agreements have followed a depressingly consistent pattern. Proponents always promise job gains, but frequently deliver job losses. For instance, if you remember in 1993, President Clinton said that NAFTA would create a million jobs in its first five years. Today, it's estimated that 700,000 U.S. jobs have actually been lost because of the agreement. Remember that giant sucking sound that Ross Perot warned us about with NAFTA? Well, that agreement only covered Mexico and Canada. TPP affects 40% of the global economy. So the TPP sucking sound would be like, let's say, if every agent in Hollywood all snorted a line of coke at exactly the same moment, <laughs> that's what it would sound like. I'm hearing it actually right now. We're not that far. Then there's the way that TPP would allow big multinational corporations to completely bypass our judicial system. See, under the agreement, if a government passes a law that protects its citizens but costs a corporation money, that corporation can sue for lost profits. And the case wouldn't be heard by independent judges, but by a panel of corporate lawyers. And we all know how much they care about the public good. <laughs> now listen to this. If the company wins, the ruling can't even be challenged in a U.S. court, and American taxpayers, <laughs> we could be required to cough up millions or even billions of dollars in damages. Listen, I get it. I know America's courts are far from perfect, but if you think international bodies are any less fucked up, I've got one acronym for you. FIFA! <laughs> And of course, it's hard to feel comfortable with a deal that's being negotiated in secret. In fact, to hear the details of this deal, you've got to be a member of Congress. And if you want to actually read the text, you've got to go to a room in the bowels of the Capitol Visitor Center, and you get one section at a time handed to you, and somebody watches over you as you read. I mean, it's more closely chaperoned than my junior prom. <laughs> All right, Seekoff, no, no hips, no hips. <laughs> And no matter what, you absolutely, positively cannot discuss the details of what you've read. I mean, this isn't a trade agreement. It's a Brad Pitt movie. You do not 
talk about Fight Club. These are just some of the reasons that politicians on both sides of the aisle have been sounding the alarm about TPP. People have told me, well, we can't make this public because if we made it public and the American people saw what was in this trade deal, they would be opposed to it. We need to look at what we're doing because some of the trade deals in the past haven't worked out so well. Millions of job losses, but yet they're going to try the same thing again and hope for a different result. That's insanity. What exactly is in this agreement? Corporate America has said we want these trade policies, and the leaders of both political parties have said, yeah, that's what we will do. Then that's not free trade. Yeah, that's what we will do. <laughs> when Mike Huckabee and Bernie Sanders join forces, you know that you are either talking about a really shitty trade deal or a wacky new buddy comedy. <laughs> Aisle crossers, the one thing they hate more than each other is TPP. <laughs> but the American people still haven't cared. So thinking that the issue might be too wonky, independent groups have gone into overdrive, trying to rally the troops by making the TPP more accessible and, you know, fun. The biggest threat to the internet you've probably never heard of. President Obama says it's good for everyone. But why are he and other leaders keeping it under lock and key? In other words, it's a Trojan horse in a global race to the bottom. TPP is being negotiated in secret through a series of backroom deals that shut out the public. And if Congress gets fast-track approval, you're going to hear a new giant sucking sound. In return for eliminating the tariff on mine your genes, TPP countries like Vietnam would have to open their markets. No nation state can impose any regulation on a corporation that prevents its ability to make money. <laughs> and even folks like this guy have given it a shot. TPP will make Jewish Wall Street and the corporations they control masters of the world. <laughs> I never said that some of the arguments against TPP weren't batshit crazy. <laughs> now, what I think they should do is get naughty by nature and remake that song, you know? I'm down with TPP. Yeah, you know me. No? <laughs> Not working for you? Okay, we'll get Treach to do it. It'll be much better. Now, to be fair, all these efforts haven't been completely in vain. Yeah, interest in TPP has gone from utterly off the radar to a fringe issue that occasionally pops up on my Facebook feed, posted by that guy I knew in high school who always votes for the Green Party. <laughs> Which brings us back to WikiLeaks, trying to crowdfund a $100,000 reward. The thinking apparently being, if we can't get people to actually care, maybe we can throw some money at them. You know, make it rain, WikiLeaks! <laughs> but I don't know. I'm not sure even 100 k is going to do the trick. But maybe, just maybe, this fun fact will. Passage of the bill may hinge on the United States defending slavery. Yeah, that's right, slavery. You see, due to a procedural error, an anti-slavery provision accidentally made its way into the version of the bill approved by the Senate. Now, this provision would prevent Malaysia, a country with an absolutely horrific track record on forced labor and human trafficking, from being part of the deal, which apparently is not acceptable because Malaysia includes the Malacca Straits, a vital shipping lane we don't want the Chinese to control, although we've already allowed them to buy a half of Beverly Hills, so I don't know what the problem is. <laughs> So now, the White House is counting on House Ways and Means Committee Chairman Paul Ryan to remove the anti-slavery amendment and get TPP back on the fast track. Now, I want you just to chew on that for a second. America's allegedly socialist president is teaming up with a Koch brothers-backed GOP darling to throw slaves under the bus in order to pass TPP. I mean, come on, Mr. Obama. Your legacy was looking so good. You know, you were the health care reform president, the immigration reform president, the new vacation options on the sunny shores of Cuba president. <laughs> your second term is when you're supposed to cement your progressive reputation, not stake your claim as the, hey, I'm okay with slavery guy. <laughs> I'm down with TPP. <laughs> All right, it's Q&A time. Tonight's first guests are one of the greatest actors of his generation a seven-time Oscar nominee, and his wife, who co-stars in his latest film, Wild Horses. Let's take a look. You have to hear what I'm going to tell you. What kind of man are you? 
Look who's here. Pop. Well, good to see you. Welcome home. Texas Rangers. We we'll reopen a case of a young man who disappeared 15 years ago, Jimmy Davis. How come I knew that as soon as I heard the knock on the door? I missed you, Dad. And I'd like to know you better. But I guess both of our hearts are closed. Maybe that's the problem. I've had that gut feeling for years that everything starts and ends right here. I want you to stay away from my dad. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, please join me in welcoming Robert and Luciana Duvall. I didn't know you had a big arm. Yeah, That's great. A lot of people here. <laughs> Terrific. Welcome to the couch. Nice to be here. Thank you. Now, besides starring in this film, you wrote it and you directed it. And there's a lot of really interesting themes in here uh, that you don't usually associate with the Western, you know, right. gay rights, immigration. Yeah. So what about this story made you want to tell it? Well, I, I, we got the script, and uh, it was in pretty bad shape. And she said she would only make a fire with it. <laughs> so uh, I, I finally optioned it, and we worked on it. I kept the two things of the gay son and, and, the, and the woman, Lady Ranger, because I wanted to have her in there. I kept those two things and we worked on the script and finally got it where we wanted it to be, hopefully. Now, after you, you know, threw it in the fire, yes, sir. Uh, what about <laughs> the uh, story appealed to you? And, you know, you play a Texas Ranger who is always uh, kind of pursuing him, but not in the way that a couple might normally be Exactly, <laughs> quite the opposite. I think uh, the, the chance to work with Bob again, uh, the adventure of trying to, you know, find out what law enforcement is about and how you can, you know, what would look like at the end of this journey. And it was tough, but it was a, it was a good experience. You got a blue belt in Brazilian jiu-jitsu. She's still at That's it. So I got to be nice now. For, yeah. <laughs> yeah. This is so like racy so kind of thing. You bend the so arm back. So, so do I. I. <laughs> really? So do I have to be nice. Yeah, I've been inspiring oh, yesterday, so you can see I've inspired. I thought I just so. had to worry about the tango, <laughs> but it's the scar she's got. <laughs> well, no, it's it's like it's like the tango in a way because once they're on the ground, jiu-jitsu is infinite. Like the tango is with the steps. Easy, but you know, really wonderful. But you know, she was great to work with. I'm nervous now, I gotta say. No, you know, uh, I will no, defend no, no. you. Okay, I, oh, I, she'll I, defend I, me. Yeah, well, yeah, that's I'll much protect nicer. her. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. So let me ask you about, about the, the subplot with the, the, the estranged gay son. Yes. Um, are you surprised uh, by how much that issue has changed in the perception of the American people over the last, even just seven years ago, yeah. six years ago in, in California, right? They voted Prop uh, 208. Yeah. Now, well, this states. was theoretically 15 years, and I had a bit of a revelation and came to a better conclusion about my son. You know, we bonded it towards the end. You know? But in general, how do you feel about the, the issue, uh, you know, politically? Do you let, think it's... You know, let let people do what they want to do, I Absolutely. guess. You know, let yeah. them do what they want to do. If you don't, if you don't hurt anybody, yeah. you know, choose what you want to do. You know, be yeah. happy, you know. That sounds good. That yeah. sounds good. Yeah. Now... We don't have to go as far as Bruce Jenner, but that's okay. <laughs> <laughs> all right, all right. I gotta be PC, Caitlin. Uh, Is that his name? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Now, now. She also looks the... gorgeous, by the way. I mean, my goodness. <laughs> Cover of Vanity Fair. Yeah. A lot of, a lot of, a lot of, yeah. lot of press. Now, uh, immigration. That's also the, the, the character, your character, uh, Mr. Briggs, yeah. not uh, a fan. He's kind of got a complex. In some ways, he's like, send those people back. Yes. But we know that he had a relationship. Yes, yes. So go back, yeah, because they, were, they, they mean to do some harm somewhat. But he says to his, uh, his daughter, he says, call the proper authorities or don't. I'll leave it up to you. So, you know, he's the... Listen, I have a friend who's a top lawyer in America, great lawyer, right? He has a woman working in his home illegally for 18 years. He doesn't want any queers around. He doesn't want anybody to take his guns. A lifelong Democrat. But. There's no but. That's it. <laughs> There's none. But he has her. Yeah, but yeah, but the only but is then his, his, uh, his uncle is very conservative and they have similar views in Texas. So, you know, they break the laws, whatever, you know. People... But don't you think that that sort of is a pattern in America that we sort of uh, have very, very strongly held beliefs except how they affect us? You know, I don't want yeah. it except for my one cousin. Or yeah, my, it could you know. be, yeah, it could be, yeah. But now you're, you're, you're an immigrant. Yes. Uh, I can't quite tell, but uh, yes. the accent, uh, yes. Argentina. Yes, sir. So yes. what is your feeling? Should we, you know, we can't, we can't throw open our borders, but how do you feel we should, as a country, address this issue? You know, I think you should have laws, but I think it's a country, which I enjoy going to any state 
because we have the privilege of traveling. Uh, we just came from Utah, and they were, in Utah of all places, churches from all over the world that I have never seen. And Not I would say, one, well, lot, you, you know, so being able to be in Utah and experience that exchange of come to LA or go to Miami and or any any place and have this diversity yeah. of people, I have great joy, I can tell you. And to have that exposure, I think only in America I have had that opportunity. Not so uh, much in your I, home country. Right? No, not at all. And, and it was randomly or something very, uh, like you would see gypsies or you would see the Mormons walking around in the mountains of Argentina where no, they were not developed. So it was just quite an experience. But here you have that exposure to so many people from so many parts of the world that I found this a thrill. And it's the thing I love about America the, the most. You spend a lot of time in the border states and you, you know yeah, we have yeah. this sort of put up the fences, you know, jar of yeah. PAO down in Arizona. You gotta have some kind of rules. I mean, you gotta have some kind of rules, I think, you know. One of the scenes that really struck me the most in the movie is when one of the characters says, how many sunsets have you seen? And your character says, it's really how many sunsets are you going to see? Uh, how many are left? Yeah, and he gives his horse to her. So that's in a way, past, he knows he's gonna die. Right. Because my mother in, 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 in her old age home, she told the people I won't be here tomorrow. So I wanted to be a subtle way of saying, I know my end is very near, take my horse. So you wrote that, though. Is this something you think about? Do you think about mortality? Do you think about... Don't you? Um, <laughs> when you tell me that she's a yeah. jujitsu, yeah, I think a little bit about my mortality. <laughs> no. Just, just, you know, no, but... When I first met her, she said to me, what's it going to be like when we grow old? I said, I already am old! <laughs> <laughs> And my, my father-in-law said, I want to call you father or son, he said. <laughs> and then I came up, my old friend, Wilfred Brimley. I said, you know, I have a wonderful, I love her so much. He said, she's younger than I am. He said, let me tell you something, my friend, the worst thing for an old man is an old woman. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, he is an incredibly vital. You're, you're 84 now. Yes. Am I? Yeah. 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 And okay. last year, you were the oldest person ever to be nominated for an Oscar for your performance yeah. in The Judge. Yeah. The, 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 the oldest that never won. <laughs> well, yeah, you, you, you've got the one. Yeah, I got one, yeah. One yeah. for seven. Yeah, yeah. Was, but, yeah. but you know what? Like, screw them. Yeah. You know what I mean? No, no. I mean, Tom guy, Hagen, yeah. Lieutenant Colonel Kilgore. Yeah. Bull Meacham, yeah. screw them. Yeah, right, right. Right? Yeah, yeah. yeah. No, no, Those no, no, Oscars, no, no, it's okay. It was fine, it was fine. The guy that won was okay. He did a good job. <laughs> did, you, did you like that performance? Yeah, th very much. Now, very much so. uh, do you, did you enjoy the experience of being nominated this last time and going to the yeah, parties? Yeah, I wanted to go, I wanted to show off that beautiful dress she wore. That, yeah, that's that true. Was but, you know, that was important to me. Yeah, uh, we were celebrating 20 years together. Yeah and a long journey. Bobby works a lot. We were in, away for nine months or 10 months from our home in Virginia. And uh, so there was a lot to celebrate. He was in a wonderful film with Downey. It was a great experience. Working and promoting these films is, you know, it's a long, you know, tedious work sometimes. And then he directed a film. After 60 years of work, how many, he did 60 plays, over 100 movies. Yeah. I mean, and I'm in this part of this journey with him, and I thought, well, you're nominated again, and why not celebrate, you know, with Zeno? Yeah. You know, right, it's yeah. right, 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 right. Yeah. I mean, yeah. is, I, I always think about this, you know, people talk about retiring, and it seems they retire and kind of actually shrivel before our eyes, you know? Is the secret to being a uh, kick-ass 84-year-old just staying busy? It's just so I don't shrivel before your eyes. Yes. <laughs> I was really here. Right. I get what you're saying. <laughs> yeah, not good. Yeah, right. That, not good. Right. Now, uh, your son is played by James Franco. Franco, terrific, yeah. yeah. And I read that he, you were only able to get him for five days. Five days, um, and I, then I gave him two days on a movie he did. You switched? Yeah. You traded? Yeah, yeah. You got yeah. the better part of the deal. You got five for two. Yeah, yeah, but he had a bigger part. But you know, he has a photographic memory, so that's why he cuts time, so that's why he can do four or five movies a year. Why was he worth waiting for? What about James Franco made it worth, like, saying, okay, I'll work around the limitation? I don't know. He's like, talented. I mean, he's a he's talented like, guy. And Josh Hartnett, too. We got scenes. him. And we had wonderful people. Uh, Adriana Barraza from, from Florida. I call her, what do I call her? The, uh, Eleonora Duzo. The Eleonora Duzo of Mexico. She's a great actress. And we were fortunate. We have wonderful people. Then I used the real Texas Rangers. You know, and, uh, and uh, Angie Cepeda from uh, Columbia. She played a lady ranger, you know. Yeah. And, 
And she, Josh, I mean, I have Josh my wonderful. favorite scenes. Josh Hartnett, yeah, yeah, yeah wonderful, wonderful it's guy. Great to wonderful. work with. Yeah, very wonderful. dedicated and generous. Yeah, it's a different kind of movie, but Brilliant. you know, it's very good behavior and good actors. Yeah. You know, and I try to, when I try to direct, I try to be an extension of myself as an actor. What I would like to be, how I would like to be directed, it doesn't always happen. Where you're left alone and let let the director lets it come from them, so I don't interfere. Just let it come from them. Because you hire him to do it, so don't say do this. I once worked with the director way back who said, "When I say action, tense up, God damn it!" Now that's the worst thing you could say. <laughs> <laughs> to say, to say to an actor, tense up. I think we were to be said, "Relax, God damn yeah, it!" Because yeah, then yeah. you'd be like, it's like, it's like you, it's like, you come, on, come on, come on, come yeah. on, right now. That's the question. Yeah, I'm wife, come on. What's it like directing your wife? Is well, it a little tricky? You know, you didn't like the take, honey, sweetie. I, no, no, <laughs> I, we don't. It doesn't even. It doesn't even get that far. No, <laughs> it doesn't even get that far. Uh, she's very smart Can and you imitate uh, me? she does things oh, uh, her own way. You want to imitate me on the set? Well, how do we, what do you do? I You're very good imitating me. Well, I forget. What do we I don't do? know. I, I mean, I think that's it. <laughs> <laughs> subtle, yeah, very yeah. subtle. No, no, no. She's got a mind of her own, believe me, but that's okay. That's okay. Welcome to the club. <laughs> it's like playing doubles and tenors, you know what I'm saying? You're, you're partners. But now, for you, though, what's it like being directed by your husband? We'll flip it. You're, you're well, acting. I mean, it was first of all to get it straight from the beginning. She sleeps with the director, so she got the part. Yeah. Right. right. That's the reason. That's the reason. Yeah. Yeah. I read that. Yeah. yeah. Right. That's the only reason I took the part, really. Yeah. So. <laughs> only yeah. director I want to sleep with. But she, yeah. I, can, I can tell you how she in in, in in Argentina how she does her business. It's very different on the streets, middle class business mentality. So I didn't have to send her to Well, East it's Strasbourg. more than that. I, I, very... I think you should give yourself some credit. Bob is very good at allowing you to be in touch with yourself. And it's okay to be with whatever... Like, there was some scenes that sometimes you don't connect. You know, actors, sometimes they come on set, and they don't connect with the scene. They're not emotionally connected. And sometimes directors want them to connect with something that is not there. Yeah. So they force them to do something that is... Not available right now. And Bob said, it's just fine. So the opposite of tense up, goddammit, I say start from zero. And you can end with zero. Let the process take you to the result. Don't end with the result. So, you know, just like we're talking now, talking and listening, this simple, people say, well, what's, what's, well, try it. It's not necessarily easy to be like this when a camera rolls, you know. What? To have this type of healthy irreverence. Yeah. Yeah, yeah no, exactly. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Uh, now, let me ask you this. Um, we talked last year. And, yeah, I loved uh, it. I loved yeah, it. It was great. And we, uh, it was a highlight of my entire year. You came uh, all, all the way to New York to talk to that's me. That's that right. Great. I did. <laughs> yeah. It was great. Robert Duvall, 3,000 miles? <laughs> Fuck yeah. Um, <laughs> so, so we talked about at that time, you had said you had done an interview where you said that you thought the GOP was uh, in a bit of a mess. <laughs> Here we go. I knew we'd get around to this. Come on. You know I knew we'd get around to this. It's the Huffington Post. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, now, wait a minute. Let me ask you one thing. When she t switched from a uh, conservative to, to a liberal, were you, were, you, were you with the journey or did she grab you on the way? I was, you know, let's say this was, the, this was running for the Senate. Yeah. And this is now. Yeah. I was like here. Yeah. Yeah. So early in the process. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, well, you know, I, I, yeah, I, I don't know who I'm going to vote for. I'm, a, I'm, I'm so tired of politics is so, you know. Yeah. There's, there's certain things we can talk about when we finish the interview. Right. <laughs> but, uh, you know, I, I'll vote, but I don't know. It might be even third party. I don't know. But as you look at the, does it strike you as strange where, like, we have like 20 people running already? That's strange. Every day it's somebody it's new coming in. The too debates much. are going to be like 40 too, people on the stage. Too much. Yeah. Too much. Too I wonder, why, why do you think that is? What's happening, you think? Well, I think that everybody, uh, you know, wants a little taste of it. And to be honest with you, I think what they do is they up their price when they get a job at Fox. <laughs> yeah. Good day, they yeah. don't actually think they're going to win. Yeah. But, you know, you get your name recognition oh, up a little bit. On Fox, well, so does Bernie F uh, Sanders go on Fox. Well. What does that fit in? He's going to go, yeah. Yeah. You know, <laughs> people go, what, is, what is this yeah thing? I don't know right, what that is. Right, right. Um, let me ask you a, a quick last question uh, for both of you. Yes. Briggs is another in a long line of irascible characters that you play. Kind of, yeah, yeah. You yeah. know, kind of crusty. They complex call guy. He has his humor. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's obviously more interesting to play somebody who might be called, I don't know, an asshole, right. per se. Is it more interesting to play one? Well, it's all percentages. Eighty percent asshole, twenty percent a good guy. The next day, it may reverse it. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? 
But you know, I just haven't just played Western. My, one of my favorite parts I've ever played is when I played Joseph Stalin. Very difficult part to play. Very difficult. What was the percentage with Joseph Stalin? <laughs> I had to find some sense of vulnerability. You know what I'm saying? And uh, you know, I, I you know I don't read reviews, but the best review I ever got was from Nikita, Nikita Mikhailkov's father, who worked eight times with Stalin, and he said I did it okay. So that was a great review. I mean, <laughs> I, I don't have to go to a newspaper Some, to read somebody, that. I don't I have to go to William Holden of the New York Times. Yeah. <laughs> well, no, somebody, who, who said that you touched the soul of Stalin? He did. He said I touched the soul of Stalin. That's a beautiful yeah. And he's not really irascible or cranky or crusty, right? Uh, short temper. <laughs> short temper moody. <laughs> yeah. Good man. Short temper moody. Yeah, yeah. 20 years. Yeah, yeah it's yeah, great. Exactly. Fantastic. Well, thank you for spending this thank time with us. Everybody, let's hear it for Robert. Yeah. Oh, Roy, thank you. Good to see you, Roy. Yeah. Just hang here for one second. Yeah, yeah. Robert and Luciana's film, Wild Horses, opens in theaters today and is also available on demand. Yes. Okay. Uh, you hang here for one second while I do this toss. Don't you hate that asshole who always ruins something you really like by telling you a whole bunch of bad stuff about it? Well, with our next video, I'm going to be that asshole. If you happen to love shopping at Urban Outfitters, get ready for that to change, because this is too much information. Just like Subway sandwiches tasted way better before you found out the bread contained the same stuff as a yoga mat, and iPhones were way cooler before you knew about the suicide nets surrounding the factories where they're made, and Bill Cosby was so much funnier before, well, you know, it's the same with Urban Outfitters. For millions of young people across the country, Urban Outfitters is the store of choice for matching that just right pair of skinny jeans with that just right ironic t-shirt to wear while reading that just right crappy novelty book. Along with sister brands Anthropology and Free People, Urban Outfitters is practically a public utility for young suburbanites trying to be cool. And who's the super hip scenester behind all that cool? This guy. Meet Richard Hain, co-founder and CEO of Urban Outfitters Incorporated. Hain loves selling hip clothes to identity-seeking teens almost as much as he loves giving money to anti-gay politicians. Over the years, Hain has personally donated over $14,000 to noted homophobe Rick Santorum, at least a thousand of which was donated after Santorum made statements comparing homosexuality to bestiality. When Hain was asked if he shared Santorum's views on gays, he refused to offer any comment, saying, I have my own opinion, but I'm not gonna share it. Pretty cool. But while he wouldn't share his opinion with a reporter, he might be okay with sharing it with his store's inventory managers. In 2008, Urban Outfitters quickly discontinued a t-shirt that read, I support same-sex marriage within a week of it hitting store racks. But gays shouldn't feel singled out by Urban Outfitters. The store has been criticized for selling items that are offensive to nearly every race and sexual orientation. At Urban Outfitters, backwards-minded stereotypes are fashion forward. The Navajo Nation even sent Urban a cease and desist letter telling them to stop putting the word Navajo on items like the company's Navajo Hipster Panty and the Navajo Flask. Because nothing's cooler than appropriating Native American identity to brand random crap manufactured in Asia. Having managed to offend a majority of minorities, last year, Urban turned its attention to a heretofore untapped group to be insensitive about. Dead Kids, when it began selling a vintage Kent State sweatshirt designed to look like it was covered in bloodstains, an amusing nod to the killing of four Kent State students in 1970. But offending people to feign edginess isn't the company's only transgression. They also love stealing from independent designers. Urban Outfitters has repeatedly been forced to pull t-shirts and jewelry lines from their stores after designers accused the brand of ripping off their creative work. You'd think that in an era where young people who shop at these stores are more open-minded and inclusive than ever, the company's bottom line would be suffering. But Urban Outfitters is doing better than ever, having just recorded over $1 billion in quarterly sales for the first time in its history. We're sure that Richard Hain would love to give all the open-minded, inclusive young shoppers who made that happen a big, fat hug if he wasn't afraid it might make him seem gay and lead to bestiality. They say an informed customer is a happy customer. We say, not necessarily. Yeah. I know, right? 
Sorry, Urban Outfitter fans. All right, it's panel time. Our first panelist is an Oscar-nominated actress and the author of two, not one, two new books, Out Came the Sun and Invisible Girl. Please welcome Marielle Hemingway. Thank you. Marielle, thanks for being here. Thank you so much. And our second panelist is an actor and a comedian best known for playing Anchorman Ron Burgundy's body sports guy, Champ Kine. <laughs> Give it up for David Kegner. <laughs> This, I'm glad you are here. Thank you. I'm a, I'm a big fan of both of you. Thank you. We're happy to be here. Yeah. You don't mind if I speak for you. Oh, no. Please do. You did when I first met you, so. How's she feeling? Is she, is she nervous? Is she liking me? She loves you. Oh, good. Good. <laughs> How could she not? We've worked together before. Yes, we have. On yeah. what? Uh, Saturday Night Live is my first episode. She That's was right. the first host of this. Uh, I, I did introduce the whole new the first Will Ferrell, you, Sherry O'Terry. I can't remember. Mark McKinney, Nancy Walls. That, that's right. Uh, I can't remember either. And I and I made out with all the women, and I just kind of brushed off all the guys. <laughs> you have to know my history. Don't. All right, I have to put a pin know. in that for a second. There, <laughs> hold on a second. Can't let that skip by. You made out with all the women. Yeah. On the show or backstage? Or? No, on the show. Oh, that was okay. part of the intro. That was the oh, okay. intro. I didn't, yes. Yeah. Because of your previous movie experience. Yes. Yes. Personal yes. best. I yes, uh, I'm familiar you. with Robert Towns. Thank slow you. motion jumping over the yes. high jump. Bobby and then Tom. Roseanne. Yes. I kissed Roseanne. That's true. Yes. That's true. And then backstage <laughs> with my wife. <laughs> God. I missed it. I was out here doing the warm up and I missed that stuff. Anyway, let's talk about some stories. Uh, this yes. is this is actually more fascinating. But let's talk about some stories. Okay. One of the big stories that made news this week was the TSA. Did you see the story? That yes. they they had some internal investigation that showed that 95% of the time they failed to get weapons or fake bombs coming through. Why am I not surprised? That was my question. <laughs> My question is, does this scare the shit out of you, or is this what you expect? Uh, I, I, I kind of am not surprised. I mean, I think there's been a time when, you know, I think that I have traveled with my boyfriend, and he's put um, a knife in by accident, you know, to cut an apple or something, and they haven't found it. You know, that's disturbing. But they always get my nail clipper. I yes. Was, <laughs> and I they was... make you throw away almond butter, which they say is liquid. It's not, by the way. Not allergy? <laughs> Not allergy. No, not allergy and not liquid. I mean, I can do this. If it doesn't pour out, yeah. then I'm right. sorry, it's not a liquid. Don't you think? I do. If you can't pour it, it's not a liquid. That's, That's a right. fair, fair assessment. What do they say are causing these? What, what are the symptoms here? It, <laughs> so, all right, we know there's a failure. Yeah. We know why. I'm asking you, what do you think oh, is the failure? Okay. Yeah. Well, <laughs> it's a government agency that's way too large. Yes. It's like the post office. Have you ever lost mail? Once or twice. Okay. Yeah. So it's it's got it's too large a, a, an organization to succeed, right? And then my guess is once you're inside there, it's very hard to uh, manage, because how many times have you been through uh, any line? And you're like, why aren't you just putting more people on right now? This is clearly a peak time. Let's manage this better. I'm I'm not normally an advocate of corporatizing anything, because corporations are psychopaths. We all know that. <laughs> But in this instance, this should be, she might be something that would be better off privatized because if something didn't work at that point of entry, I wouldn't do business with them any longer. So, there you go. But anyway, but I don't applaud for like, privatizing anything. Yeah. But no, <laughs> privatizing is not normally the answer, but clearly it's a, a, a poorly run government agency. I think we should be like the Israelis and just put a guy with an AK-47 on the plane that just, you know, everybody's going to behave themselves. Liam Neeson on every flight. Thank you. Yeah. <laughs> Do you, do you think um, this is more for show anyway? Do you think the TSA ever was designed to actually stop people? No, or do I you actually do believe that they're very serious about their job. And, you you know, as a, a very frequent flyer, I want to be very, very careful. I love you. Please be nice to me in that line. Mm. But it is dangerous, Are right? they ever not nice? Do you get special treatment because you're no. famous Oh, no. People? Actually, I think it's quite the opposite. I think they get... I think they want to show you that they have power over you and that you're no one. Like, take your clothes off. <laughs> you know, like, we're going to pat you down. Like, oh. I'd like to <laughs> also say, so they, they, they did their percentage comparison based on what? The number of times they tried to get something through? Yeah, they did a and, test. They sent in Homeland Security agents undercover. Oh, I think wow. it was something like 75 times they went in, 67 like, times they didn't get it. Like, real weapons? Like, no, no. Well, fake bomb, but... Uh, but, yeah. like, stuff that stuff, they should Stuff, guns, see. bombs... Well, here's the thing, though. How many things do they catch? That's what they didn't report. 
we don't know how many things that didn't get through. Yeah. So that's the other part of the equation. They're not on this test. Uh, I think it was you know. Okay, but just in in life. In general. In life, in general. So this is one particular set of uh, of a mean, yeah. right? Well, yeah. what about the whole? aggregate of it, right? So we have to look at that. How many things actually get prevented, that's not reported on. There's only one slice of one thing that's reported on. Do you think that something on. actually does get, you know? I, I think it would get reported, don't you? I do. But that's the other thing. This, I mean, are we? I mean, I'm a fan of complete transparency and openness, but yeah. 95%, I don't want this to be told to the terrorists. <laughs> right? Yes, right? Exactly. Let's, let's I totally agree. Loose lips uh, blow up planes or something. There's a Exa or something different rhyme. Like that. Yeah, but that didn't rhyme at all. <laughs> Well, it doesn't matter if the point was made. Yeah, thank you, thank you. Yeah, thank God. I appreciate it. Now, yeah. when you travel, do you prefer the full body scan or the pat down? I actually, I always opt out because I think that they're going to find out that that full bo body scan is like a total, like they're making you sick. Not to mention they can see through you. I don't like that. I right? I, I think that's weird. I request the pat down. <laughs> But that you're doing it for other reasons. Yeah, yeah, yeah. There's no question. But I, yeah. No, but I, I do the same thing. I asked one guy because I fly I very, just, very frequently. I fly too much. It's scary. And I said, you know, if you were me, would you go through? And he goes, I wouldn't do it. Yeah, but, exactly. But the thing is, whenever but they I, try, some people try to tell you, oh, but it's not. You know, there's radio no radi waves. radio waves. Radio waves. What is it? And it's less than being in the plane itself. I'm like, well, I'm going to be less than less. <laughs> You know, just you know the other thing is they life. also try to shame you. I always say, you know, oh, I'd like, yes. I'd like the pat down. They yell, you know, opting out. Yes. <laughs> opting out. And then I always say, no, no, I'm not opting out of the scanner. I'm opting into the pat down. <laughs> yes, yeah, I'm opting It's in. just reframing. Okay, <laughs> another story. Uh, you know, anyway, before we do, you know what they actually are good at, uh, the TSA? We know that they're not good at catching these uh, test pat downs. No. no. <laughs> yeah, they're actually good at the instas, the Instagram. Yeah, they have an account. Seriously. Oh, yeah. No. yeah, listen. No. And they have their own hashtag. Hashtag TSA good catch. And they wow. put up all of the stuff that they like you got this gun that they captured. This is what you were oh, talking about. Oh, so they about. this is what you were talking about. So they Who was do on this? actually was this the, the teenage mutant ninja turtle guy who wow. was trying to fly? This is uh Batman the... was trying to fly. Nice. <laughs> they have the skull. Look at this, the skull blade. Wow. And then the skull, look, the throwing stars. Yes. Wow. And then of course they got this one. Now here's my question. <laughs> I was like, oh, honey, I forgot I had the meat cleaver in my pocket. Yes. I, 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 like your that's husband, not, forgot the meat cleaver. Yeah, but that's not forgetting an apple. Like, that's serious that's stuff. That's a butcher. Yeah. Ooh. That was, it was just a butcher. <laughs> See, you're, you're an optimist. Could be you an artist. Could be an artist. You the thing, though. I mean, a knife's <laughs> not going to get too far. I know they did before, but everybody, I know they did no one's going to. Not too dark, but I, <laughs> nobody would stand for it anymore. If it's, if it's a blade, there's going to be 10 people, 20 people out of their seats very quickly. So, but I mean, a handgun is ridiculous. Yeah. And it's sad that that lost. But this does show that they have found some things. They're getting, but should, should they avoid, I mean, it's like, do they, do they need to have a Twitter account? Shouldn't they just focus on getting the bad guys? Yes. Instead of tweeting, yes. or, but you know? Isn't, isn't yeah. that, oh, this is good for the And like you said, <laughs> like you said, do we really want them to know what? We are getting and not getting, and oh, now I know what we can put in. <laughs> like, exactly, or, exactly. But it's good propaganda to show that right. you can't get away with We are with getting everything. stuff. Although my guess is that bad guys probably don't, aren't following TSA on Instagram. <laughs> I don't know. Not? I think they're very uh, social media savvy. Yeah. Going to the, anyway, <laughs> let's go to our second story. Is it finally time for so-called female Viagra? Oh. The FDA is <laughs> one step closer to approving what they're it's calling the... so wrong. Okay, that's what I want to ask okay. you. Okay. Is this a real Thank need? Thank you for asking me. Well, I'm sorry. <laughs> sorry. <laughs> now, now, really, is this a need or is this one of those cases where they're faking it? They're making up the need, kind of like, sh you know, shaken leg syndrome or whatever that thing is. <laughs> right? You, know, you haven't seen... Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. That, yeah the, the, Restless, yeah, leg. Restless, Restless leg. Restless leg. Yes. Shaking leg. I thought sh shaking leg it sounded shaking better. Shaking leg, that's a different that's one, but awesome. very close. Yeah, very, have, very that close. hasn't been approved. <laughs> right. Yes. That you still have. If you have shaking leg, yes. you're, you're fucked. Yeah. yeah you actually get helping. shaking leg from Viagra. Ah. <laughs> but that's a that's different That's the third leg. Yeah, yeah. sorry. <laughs> sorry. Yeah. Yeah. Anyway. Yeah. Sorry. <laughs> you set him up, I got him. So you were about to say, though, that this is bullshit. I think... I just think that it's wrong to try to medicate what's supposed to be a beautiful experience. Like, let's create a false something. And there's lots of natural aphrodisiacs out there. And I think for women, I think that's you? a... Yeah. Later. Later. Okay. <laughs> okay. 
Just, yes. Just, just, but do you think, you know, this is the thing in America. I just think that's weird. A pill for every A Ill. pill for everything. It's just, it's wrong. There's something about Bad it news. that's just not okay. And the question, you really like to think, uh, like you said, is there, a, is there a female demand for this particular product? <laughs> Because, or is it a guy going, I don't know what's wrong with my old lady. <laughs> uh, I think that's the case. Mines wants it. <laughs> I want her to want mines. <laughs> so, I want my doctor to put something inside her so I can put something inside her. <laughs> so, that's so, really... Wrong. Is the irony here still one larger way for a man to get inside of a woman? That's exactly right. And it's I, all wrong. The, 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 whole, the whole point of all of this sexual behavior truly is the relationship. You yeah, can't do that with, with a pill. Exactly. Because I, my guess exactly. is when you're past your... You, you're on uh, streaming. When you're, <laughs> when you're past your prime fuck time... Yes. <laughs> Shouldn't it all be cuddles anyway? <laughs> right, okay. But, it, you know, if, if I've read my biology correctly, yes. a male's prime fuck time is 19. <laughs> I don't want to give it all up. Well, but if you... But, not... you know, lifestyle has a lot to do with that. If you're not living in the, a, a proper lifestyle, you're, you know, your sex drive at whatever age is going to go down. So it's really like, how are you eating? What are you doing? Are you exercising? All these things. It's like, it, we are. We're in a society that's like, let's take a pill. Let's just take a pill. Cause you know, because I don't want to deal not, with it. Not be so stressed. Not be so busy. Yeah, whatever. But let's not be so stressed. Let's not be so busy. Maybe let's think about our life and, and change that a bit. The, the, the guy that you were doing, uh, comedically, <laughs> but, were... but don't you think... It's really that me. Was, yeah, that was really you. <laughs> That's how... I, this, is, this is the character I'm playing now. I don't think so. I met, your, I met your wife, and you have, I think, a hundred children. Yeah. So, so obviously, but, she doesn't But don't it. you think there's this, <laughs> this myth that, you know, men want it all the time, women don't? Isn't that just a way that men try to keep women down because they know that they're completely inadequate to satisfying the Whoa. real sex drive of a woman? Oh, oh, well, thank you. I thought you were going the other direction. I was, like, confused no, there for a second. No, yeah. I think this is patriarchal bullshit that, women, oh, that men maybe. realize that they got one, you know, maybe ten-minute thing in them, and the women, very expansive. But, is, but don't men think about it constantly? Thinking Isn't that about it? it. Careful oh, how you answer. <laughs> Careful how you, you answer. Define constantly. You. Like now? Like, like now. now? <laughs> like, it's constant. Like yeah. now. But here's the thing. <laughs> like now. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> No, no, I'm thinking reason. about David, and I don't, I, I don't in feel that about way? him in that way. No, not not yet. It's <laughs> I take a little time to warm up. I'm past my prime fuck time. Ah. <laughs> um, now, here's a, a serious thing, though, <laughs> I, on, on this front. No, let's stay there. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> yes, go ahead. There is a drug company influence on this. That's of the course. thing. They developed of course it, there and is. then they hired a lobbyist. Who got You're also going to find out that there's going to be, like, side effects Oh, yeah, there that. is. Yes. Completely. It lowers your blood pressure. And it's going to do it... something horrible to you. Right. Because I'm sure that Viagra does something horrible to, to men, too. I'm sure it d destroys your organs or does something. I mean, I'm David, sure. David, do you feel that? Are you worried yeah, about that? Yeah, you know that? what? You guys have dirty minds. <laughs> I, I, I don't need it. Like that. We have five kids, so I don't need it anymore. I see that. Uh, <laughs> oh, you're done. You're back to cuddle no, time. No. Well, why, you know, look. Here, all, all I care about is the longevity of it. Is a pill going to make your relationship last longer? Maybe for some people, maybe not. But that can be certainly tended to in a lot of different ways rather than taking a pill. And your, your point being that is this a manufactured need or is this a real need? Is there a real female demand? I, don't, I mean, I you don't can... I think so. Right. I, I really don't. I mean, I, like, I don't think so. Right. You don't hear it. Plus, not only that, it's not like Viagra in that Viagra says, all right, you take this pill and you can have sex within X number of hours. My understanding with this pill is you had to be on it for a while, which will supposedly increase your desire for him inside you. But microscopically. <laughs> Speaking of Viagra, I don't like the <laughs> what? I'm sorry. Was that, <laughs> Nothing. Was that untoward? No. Does it happen a different way? What's going on? I'm just washing myself of those thoughts. Don't watch yourself. Let it go. <laughs> she's, We're she's, live she's, streaming. She's, Let it go. She's I'm washing just, anything I'm washing I said. <laughs> <laughs> uh, whatever he said is, makes me feel this way. 
No, but I mean, there's not a female demand for this. No, there thing. isn't. I totally agree. There's and I also think that it's it's just a case of like pills being the answer to all of our problems. And it is. It's a pharmaceutical thing. It's like, yeah, we can make a lot of money. Right. Doing that. And that's what it's about. Ultimately, at the end of the day, they want to make a lot of money. Yes. May, yeah. May I may I ask you a question? Would you rather have a pill? For, for female Viagra or a pill that makes a man shut up and listen. <laughs> and that was beautiful, man. That was so beautiful. That was beautiful. <laughs> the sound guy's so mad at me right now. <laughs> Is he these still are, on? Is he still mic? We can still hear him. Okay. Still okay. Now, we, we, if you watch any sporting home. event, <laughs> yes. you've seen the Viagra commercials, right? Let's look, sure. let's look at these for a second here. Oh, yeah, he can't get his lighter to work. That's the problem. The lighter won't work. Yeah. Oh, but when she steals the cake, boing, very excited. He, look at him. He's very excited suddenly. And, of course, you always do that. You always sit next to your wife in a yes. separate house. In a tub yeah. outside. Here's what I, there's one of these commercials where a couple of the guys look similar, and then they're always with these other women. I would love to see one of these commercials where there's a guy with just multiple women. <laughs> <laughs> Viagra, whatever you want, with whomever you want. <laughs> okay, David, what would the female Viagra commercial look like? <laughs> oh. Uh, um, the, the, the artist is escaping me uh, who, who paints a lot of, of uh, flowers. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. George uh, O'Keefe. George O'Keefe. Yes, it would be George O'Keefe. That's it. Unfurling. Uh, no, just open. <laughs> already. And growing. Just already out. Yeah. Oh, it'd be wow! A Venus, but it'd be a Venus, it'd be a Venus fly trap. Oh, no. And at the end, it'd go, watch out, I'm ready. <laughs> I don't know. I, yeah. I didn't know what she'd be asking. No, she's okay. sipping tea I... and the flower is opening. Or it'd just be a girl walking around to a bar. Hi, I'm a cougar. <laughs> <laughs> I don't always feel like it, but when I do, I go out to the bar and look for the youngest piece of meat in it. Pill. So, take pill. the pill. And take see. the pill. And yes. see. Now, <laughs> that would be this. A week ago, I started taking this pill, so I'd be ready for this moment tonight. Yeah. <laughs> I'm ready. <laughs> now, I would be remiss if I had you here and didn't ask a couple questions specifically to Mary. I want to ask you, you've written Thank you. <laughs> two books. Yes, I have. Yes. And interestingly enough, they're the same story. Uh, it's, it's your personal story, as, as you subtitle this one, Out Came the Sun, Overcoming the Legacy of Mental Illness, Addiction, and Suicide in My Family. Yes. Now, and then you've written it for a young adult audience. Yes, I am. So when you take this story mm -hmm. and transpose it for a younger audience... How do you, you know, uh, sort of hit that gap where you're giving them information but not condescending to them like you're talking down, oh, you can't handle the... Well, actually, I did it. I, I'm, I sort of... I, maybe it was the actor in me. It was... I went into the mindset of being, you know, 15, 14, 15, 16 years old and looking back on my childhood because that was the most, the most confusing time for me. I loved my family. I loved where I grew up, but my family, you know, they were troubled. And I didn't always understand what it was that I was going through or what it was that they were doing. So I did it sort of in a journal form, and it's really... And, and I asked questions at the end of each chapter from my perspective as a child, you know, you know, maybe your parents really do love you even though they don't pay attention to you, whatever it is. And just I tried to not at all be condescending because it's not a telling kids what to do. It's just coming from that perspective of what they might be feeling. And trying to answer that. And and also, so it's called Invisible Girl because that's how I felt as a kid. I felt invisible. And I wanted to give voice and make kids feel like they're seen and heard and understood. Especially when it comes to, like, our, you know, we all have families and they're, and nobody's perfect, you know. But just to understand that they're not alone. I think that's really important. Yeah. That's really important. <laughs> now, that's great to have that perspective because to look back so hard... To look back. Yes. And a journal is such a perfect way to do it because it's so personal. Yeah. And to offer this personal journey at that point yeah. is really important because you 
uh, like my daughter is it's 13 and I'm sure she's going through that that spot of they have no idea what I'm going through right and she reads a lot of right. young right. person novels yeah so and, and then, then having some knowledge that you've gone through it and gone back and looking at it it's got to be wonderful oh, it's so it's I mean it was really actually very healing for me as well but any young person that's read it really relates to it and I don't have the same stories as your daughter but there's an but understanding of yeah. the yeah of what's going on because emotionally it is it's such a it's a crazy time. Hormones yep. are changing. You're like, the, you know, you just don't know. You don't really know who you are. You, you are. have no life experience to, like, compare it to. Because then Out Came the Sun is my life, and I can compare it to other things that are happening. Right. And it's a journey that, that has a completion. But when you're young, it's very hard to and, find. Especially for you, because really, you growing up, it was never kind of your life. It was right. you were associated with someone super... <laughs> famous right I mean right. A, a, an icon right. so that right. a, a further doesn't allow you to have your own personal experience right right so that's, in some ways wow, wow. that's oh <laughs> so sweet he's gonna go on a hey. tour with Marielle now <laughs> to uh, find the books I'm <laughs> Dude, that I might know something <laughs> and have an insight David yes sir <laughs> you uh oh I I've been you know I do research Thank yeah, you. I prepare for this. Good. I know it doesn't show, but I do. Uh, and I see that you are on the Instagrams uh, quite a bit. We talked about the TSA. Uh -huh. You, uh, let's look at uh, one of your uh, Instagram things here. When someone asks me to participate in a project, any project, I have one response. What are the deets? Do you have any deets on that? Uh-huh. What are the deets? I'm going to need some deets. Deets, 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 deets. I need some deets. <laughs> now... Give us the deets on this. <laughs> you are doing this quite uh, frequently. All right, I'll tell you why. Is there money in this, David? No. Or is this, uh... <laughs> no. I'll tell you why. You want the honest answer? I do. I don't care about social media. I really don't. Okay. And so recently, because uh, I'm in show business, my publicist said, all right, I'm going to challenge you. You just have to do something every day. <laughs> so about 4 o'clock in the afternoon, I'm like, ah. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. So that's what happened. <laughs> it's all her fault. Well, there you go. I was just like, I don't care, because it doesn't matter. Yeah. It's just it's just doing this. Hey! <laughs> all I care about is my two oldest kids going, Dad, what's that? But they always favor it. They always like it. Well, that's so, nice. Yeah. Everybody, please, big thank you <laughs> to our panel guests. Check out Marielle's books. Out Came the Sun, Invisible Girl, and be sure to catch David. He's going out on his stand-up tour. You can find out more info on davidkechner.com. And obviously, follow him on Instagram if you want the deets. All right, hang here for one second. Uh, those we just talked about were some of the stories making headlines this week. Here's one that officially passed its cultural relevance expiration date. R.I.P. Robin. We hardly knew you. Okay, before we go, it is time to help arm you for the weekend with some ready-made takes on stories that people will be talking about so you will be ready to know what to say. Our first headline, an inconvenient pope. 
Republican presidential hopeful Rick Santorum says he loves Pope Francis, but wants him to stop talking about climate change, saying the pontiff should, quote, leave science to the scientists. <laughs> I hate to break this to you, Rick, but Pope Francis happens to have a master's degree in chemistry. So he is a scientist. <laughs> And you, sir, believe the Earth is 6,000 years old. <laughs> Next up, true defective. In a recent interview, Vince Vaughn said that banning guns to prevent people from being shot is like banning forks to prevent people from being fat. <laughs> I'm not sure that analogy works. Because if you ban forks, people will still be able to eat with their hands. If you ban guns, a crazed gunman would have to walk around throwing bullets at people really hard. <laughs> Next up, not giving an inch is not what you think. <laughs> Former Rhode Island Governor Lincoln Chafee announced he's running for president and that if elected, he says he will switch the United States to the metric system. Chafee understands that he probably won't win, but he hopes to at least push Hillary Clinton 10 centimeters to the left. <laughs> and finally, sex down under. Also not what you think. Australian scientists have discovered a new species of sex-crazed marsupials that get it on for 14 hours straight. It's interesting. When a marsupial has sex for 14 hours, they call it sex crazed. But when a human has sex for 14 hours, we just call him sting. <laughs> you know who I feel bad for? The poor marsupial dude who can only keep it up for 12 hours. <laughs> okay, those were our takes. We'd love to hear any of yours. Just tweet to them to us with the hashtag HPShowTakes. And be sure to follow us on Twitter and Instagram, like us on Facebook, subscribe to our YouTube channel, and as always, swipe right on Tinder. <laughs> Please join me in thanking Robert and Luciana Duvall, Mariel Hemingway, David Kegner, along with Bernie Sanders, Vince Vaughn, Pope Francis, Urban Outfitters, and all the other newsmakers who made this such an interesting week. That's the Humbo Show, everybody. Good night. Hey, thanks for watching. Don't forget to subscribe to our channel and click here for more videos. And make sure to catch new episodes Friday at 9 p.m. on HuffingtonPost.com.